everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Today, we'll see a team that could get it done on the ground. The Rams are top 10 in rushing TDs, and they'll go up against the Seahawks team that wants to keep the running game in check. With that, we'll send it over to Brandon Guy and Charles Davis. They've got the call in this week five match. All right, Larry, thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle with the Seattle Seahawks. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you look at this Rams team as they interplay. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Seahawks, they're hitting their stride of late. Winners of three of their last four. And the way they played last week defensively, you look at the tape, it looks like they had extra guys on the field, and they thoroughly shut down that offense. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. Last year's number one overall pick, here he comes. He'll be leading them and looking for an improvement in year two, Jared Goff. And his stat line last week... That's not going to get him to the Pro Bowl, all right? No touchdowns, no interceptions, but they won. And so the bottom line for him is team won, managed the game effectively, led him to victory. He's doing all the right things. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Off now on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. An early test for this defense. Here we go on third and inches. They'll run it now with Dunbar. Before he was able to break the tackle and the extra effort moves the sticks. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Faced with their first third down conversion opportunity and able to punch it through and pick it up on the ground. And to me, doing it on the ground sends a different type of a message than throwing the football. And you know, let's face it, we've done a lot of games together. How often have we seen third down turn into an automatic passing down no matter what the yard is? Yeah, and last thing you want, that opening drive to go three and out. You got everything scripted, lined up. Let's get some points on the board, and they're able to avoid that three and out. They'll run it now. Here's Dunbar. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. And a look at Seattle's defense. Some players may change, some coaches may change, but head coach Pete Carroll is still there, which means that Seattle's defense is always going to be a threat to be the top-ranked defense in the NFL. They ranked number five in 2016, and they continue to do it with a tremendous secondary and great pass rushers up front, able to utilize their skills to create matchup problems for offenses. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. It's Johnny Hecker now, an all-pro three of the last four years on to punt. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Right. 
Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him 14 on the play. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Rawls with his first carry. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Defense has to stand tall here. Third and one. The first carry now. This is Lacey. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. Now Wilson on first down. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. The power move there couldn't buy him much space. Call it a three-yard gain, and it'll be second down. From the gun, it's Wilson. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and it's third down. shotgun Wilson and he's got Lockett and he's taken down at the 43 but not before picking up the first Wilson to Lockett there for the Seahawk first down an ex-teammate used to tell me all the time I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what you really can't hide what you're doing and I think that right there he knew right away where the blitz was coming from where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. On second down. And he hits Jermaine Curse. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. These are his numbers from last week's contest. Five catches, 61 yards. And he was able to get open there, but that's not always easy against this bunch defensively. We are deep enough into the season where numbers count. This is number one rated defense in the NFL. He'll have a tough time. They'll lock it with a grab over the middle. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. And he'll go down at the 28. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. Throwing again here, Wilson. They find some open field here. And he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. 
Russell Wilson with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Seahawks are able to strike for six. As a former defender, I would be angry as well. Could not get off the field. Well executed offensive drive. No matter what the defense tried, they couldn't stop them. Roberto Aguayo now for the point after. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the 8. Coming up later tonight in the NFL, we'll have the Chiefs heading down to Houston to take on the Texans. And then on Monday night, it'll be an NFC North battle. Vikings and Bears from Soldier Field. Traditional rivals getting after it one more time. He's going to get this one to the rookie, Cooper Cup. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And a nice gain of 21 yards. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. From the 50, it's gone. That's caught by his rookie tight end. It's Gerald Everett. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back right there around the 35-yard line. And Thomas seems to be in some pain. He's still on the ground. We'll check on his status when we get back. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. running room down to the 32 a gain of three second down not much happening there on first down I thought there might have been a hole for a split second yeah but it dried up pretty quickly didn't it closed fast to throw on second down is gone and he's gonna be out of bounds down inside the 20 it's a pickup of 16 there and it'll lead to a new set of downs when this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Now Dunbar. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. On second down, here's Goff. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. Give it here to his running back. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want a back who can create his own space, who can break tackles. And, and he takes it across for a Rams touchdown. 
It's the fullback. His second touchdown on the season. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And they just powered it in right there, Charles. Three tight ends out on the field. The fullbacks from the defense, they knew what was coming. They knew, but they weren't able to stop them. They knew they had to meet them with a little bit of force. But on that play, the big guys up front won the day. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. That time, a nine-play drive, and it results in a four-yard touchdown run. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves. And a loose football. Rawls loses it. to play in a tightly contested first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. False start, offense. So that'll back him up five. Here we go on first and 15. Here's Wilson. They set up the screen to Rawls. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. It'll be a gain of 11, and it'll make it a second down. Wilson trying to urge his guys to go faster and get set at the line. To throw is Wilson. The grab made by Curse over the middle. Wilson finding Curse, and it's a Seattle first down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. On first down, Wilson. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Give him nine there on the first down completion. To throw again is Wilson. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Again, Wilson. have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And some room to work. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And he'll take this across midfield and inside the 45. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Recovery, gone. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowl safety cam chancellor. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. 
Here's Wilson. He's got the tight end, Vanan. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Second down, Wilson. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. He won't go down. <laughs> and he's brought down. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. down with Wilson and left side here it's Graham and he is out of bounds inside the 30 a gain of six there on first Jimmy Graham had a really tough injury in 2015 that ended his season but what a bounce back in 2016 how did he not get any votes for comeback player of the year I was just going to ask you that not that Jordy Nelson wasn't deserving but 65 catches 923 yards that was the highest total by a tight end in Seahawk history and I think there's a chance that both of those numbers will increase in 2017 he was trying to get it to Jermaine Kearse and it's third down the effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. Wilson will throw again. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. And Aguayo's kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they kick it through to take the lead. There is a little bit of time left, though, here in the second quarter. And while they're concerned about not giving up a big return or giving up points themselves going into the half, how good do they feel, though, putting points on the board themselves right near the end of the first half? And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. The final shot before break here. Golf. Got a man. It's the rookie, Josh Reynolds. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. Both teams have arguably played well enough to be leading at this point, but you see the score and realize this one may very well come down to the wire. All right, let's roll those highlights. Now first and 10, Wilson's looking for room to run, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. That takes the lead up to seven. First and ten, Goff able to hook up with his rookie wideout, Cooper Cup, and he'll end up at the 45-yard line before being tackled. Rams now later on the drive. Parky's gonna look for space, and he'll take this four yards for the score. Rams tied up at seven. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And out now come the Seahawks. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. 
And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. On second down, Rawls. And it worked his way across the 30 to the 32. Yeah, he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Third and two, now Wilson. He's got curse. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go through a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Again on second and 10, it's Wilson. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. The screen was executed and completed, but where's the worry on the play? How many times is a quarterback going to get hit? Because offensive linemen have to do an acting job of making sure it looks like they're whiffing on blocks. But you got to slow them down a little bit, because if you don't, that's a lot of big guys coming at your quarterback in a big, fast way. And boy, he can get hurt. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Rams will get it at the 20. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out if that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. Let's see if they can get the latter 50%. Fighting room at the 30. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. Goff hitting Woods for a Rams first. And yes, home is where the heart is. And for Robert Woods, it's Los Angeles. He played college football at USC right here in this stadium. Man, probably feels comfortable out there. He was an All-American as a Trojan in 2011. Yeah, really trained to be an NFL player. I mean, he watched a lot of NFL cut-ups and tapes of wide receivers while he was in college before joining them on this stage. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Here's Goff now on second down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Cam Chancellor in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Chalk that up as their first sack in this game, and they tallied four a week ago. And probably not as much exultation in that sack as what took us so long. Because when you get four the previous week, 
You're counting on continuing that momentum. They didn't get that done in the first half of the game. Let's see now if they start to bring even more exotic pressure towards the quarterback. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Returnable for Lockett. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? It's a loss of 11 on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and forever. Back now in Los Angeles. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and a mile. From the shotgun, Wilson. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. On is the punter, Ryan, to send this one away. And he'll take it just outside the 40. Now a hit and a loose football. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. Now it appears we're going to get whistles and a stop. A man down on the return. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. We saw a number of good games earlier today. This one might top all of those. It's been a dandy as we come up on first and 10. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagger, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Wilson. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Michael Brockers busting through to get him for a loss of six. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't. And a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's going to end up with a nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something like that. <laughs> An eight-yard gain, so that gets him halfway there. Now they're left with a third and eight more. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. On third down, Wilson. And able to find Graham, complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the... And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Connor Barwin in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. And now it's second and goal. Wilson going to give to Rawls. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That one good for 10 yards. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. Oh, Brandon, I'm going to tell you, this is football time to me. They're inside the 10-yard line. That's like drawing the line in the sand. Who's going to make the stand here? Defensive guys, they know if he gets in the end zone, this ball game is over. And the guys with the football right now, they're thinking, let's just pound it in there. Got to hold him to three to keep this a one-score game. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And Aguayo able to knock it through. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the Detroit Expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They'll run again here with Dunbar. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Back to throw. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Trying to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. He'll look to throw. They got a man. It's Woods. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. This is Brown on the carry. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. They are, by the way, into the fourth quarter now in Oakland. Raiders continuing to roll. They have opened their lead even further. Derek Carr, two touchdown passes in the W. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. He's back to throw. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Back to throw. They got a man over the middle. It's Woods. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout, their second as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. Three. 
And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They'll look to throw. This will be caught inside the 10. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. And whistles, and they take their final timeout with seven seconds left. So the chains are on their sides. It's first and goal from the six. Now it's gone. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. Defensively now, one more play to stop. What are they looking for? You want to take away their number one running option that you've scouted and take away their number one receiver and see if someone else can beat you. One last throw here for Gaul. And this is caught. Touchdown. And now they're an extra point away from winning this thing in the final seconds. Well, that's the one they had to have. Put them in a position where they're tied up, but I got to get out of the way. We still got an extra point that's pretty crucial. That's right. Just one more element to complete the victory. Zerline now for the PAT. And now we'll get a timeout here. They're able to stop it with one second to go in this game. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. Kick this one away, and off it goes. That's fielded in the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee, and they'll put it out to the 25. One last shot for Wilson. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you were wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for L.A., they boost their record up to a strong 4-1. And, and they will hit the road next week for a date with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Meanwhile, for Seattle, the loss will move them back to 3-2 and two on the year. And perhaps fortunately for them, they'll get an early bye next week and come back to action in Week 7. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Rams are victorious here as we say so long from Exposition Park in L.A.